Hello everybody. I'm gonna try a different frame this time. I think that's not terrible. We could do the normal one, which is like over here. But I think I'm gonna try here. So we could even go lower. Like there, is that better? All right. Hello everybody. I'm gonna try this frame today and see how this goes. So today's episode of morning workout is a little uh, late. It's the afternoon. Um, but, uh, uh, go see, so that bothers me. <laughs> uh, good morning everybody. This episode of morning workout is going to be focused on recovery. So we've had about a week of exercises and uh, today I want to go through my chosen tried and true um, recovery modalities so you know there's a couple things that you need to do if you want to be more fit more healthy more capable more athletically uh, inclined and um, competent right able to go and do the things that you want to do whether it's bicycling or skiing or surfing or, or uh, any other chosen uh, sport. You need the discipline to continue to move your body, challenge your body every day. And we all have excuses. We all have internal chatter and dialogue that can, uh, you know, um, argue against our better judgment about uh, getting up and getting after it. Um, and Discipline is what can overcome that voice, and that's very important. Uh, and consistency is key. So getting a schedule and sticking to it, right? That's number one. You gotta do the work, okay? Number two is learning how to program effectively, correctly. So part of these morning workouts is giving you some exercises that you can do at home with no machines, no money spent, just you know, 10, 15 minutes, you can stretch your body, you can strengthen your muscle groups, and you can energize your, yourself, your soul. Um, so that's number two, is doing the correct exercises. Um, and, and there's a million other exercises out there that you can find for free on YouTube. Uh, there's great trainers, great coaches. You can get on a bike, you can go for a walk. You know, there's, there's uh, endless opportunities to challenge yourself physically and, and get after it. So. Um, that's number two is find something that you like, right? There's no real right way or wrong way of gaining fitness. It's, it's number one, discipline and consistency. Then number two, just having the joy of, of whatever you choose to do. Um, you know, if you're not enjoying yourself in your, in your fitness, in your exercise, you're not going to do it. So focus on what you enjoy, right? Number two. Number three uh, don't overdo it. I'm um, guilty of this as much as anybody. Uh, when I start going, I have that negative critical voice um, and I like to, you know, quelch it. I like to overcome that. I like to uh, defeat that voice and um, I go to failure. I go past failure. I've, I've dealt with lots of injuries in my life. So number three, if you want to, you know, continue to move forward effectively, you know, don't overdo it. Feel your boundaries. Find your limits and uh, get comfortable with that figure out you know how much you can swim how much you can walk how much you can jump how much you can run how much you can bicycle how many push-ups you can do whatever the limit is 
you know, get familiar with how much you need to do to, to push your limits and then, you know, what is going to hurt the next day, um, what, you know, could potentially be in the realm of, you know, precipitating an injury, uh, right? You got to know uh, how to work with your own body. Number four, and this is what we're going to focus on today, is recovery. Okay, recovery is super duper important. You can go and you can be, you know, the, the studliest uh, athlete in the world. If you don't take time to recover and use the correct modalities to recover effectively, that person uh, is not going to last very long. So um, discipline, consistency, uh, finding something that you like, right? The correct programming that you're going to continue to do, not overdoing it, recovering effectively. Okay, so today is recovery day. So we've got a couple tools that we can use that are really wonderful. We've got the foam roller. So that's a really good thing. Um, in here, I've got uh, some things that I'm gonna show you guys. So just a little cheapo massager. That's really uh, kind of a cool little thing. Uh, another roller that's uh, more, um, uh, firm, that's a good thing to use. Uh, and then I've got two other uh, implements that I'll show you about. Uh, another uh, tip to the Theragun, and I'll show you the Theragun. So let me get this. And uh, I'll take you through a few of the um, best recovery modalities that I know. So uh, how's that look? You can see our dining room table there. Okay, so number one, uh, you know, feel your body. Feel how you know you're feeling. What's going on? What's tight, painful? You know, what needs to stretch? So let's start out before we do the um, myofascial release. So I'll talk about these in a minute. Let's just do a little bit of getting inside our body. So. Maybe a little 30 second warm up jog, get the movement, get the flow going, get the blood pumping wide, and then narrow, wide, and then narrow. How about moving forward, moving back, moving forward, moving back, moving forward, moving back. How about moving laterally, and then hand diagonal. So right there, just, just right there, I'm getting the body moving. Now I'm not stressing myself to you know, hit it hard today because I've been you know, putting in the time, putting in the effort, doing the things that I love, getting the sweat every day. And so today I can allow myself to recover. So there's just a little, Little warm up. We'll do our our forward bend, so arms to the side, like Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. Hip hinge, keeping the back straight, the back alive, the back moving, energy up and down, feeling proprioception in your feet. Right, I'm not, you know, falling to one side. I'm feeling myself, tightness in my back. Then when you get to that critical point where you feel like you can't bend any further, dropping the head. Arms over the top, feeling a good forward bend. You know, you can kind of go into that downward dog position. Just getting that stretch, getting the body opened up, and then coming back up to center, bending our knees, arms back, rotate up. So, you know, we'll do three of those. So there's one. Just Feeling the body, honoring the body, letting the body know that you're not tense, you're willing to relax, feeling good, feeling where the body's tense. I'm a little bit tight in my lower back on the left side. So we'll do one more of those. Just kind of enjoying the motion, enjoying the movement, feeling 
the nervous system sending signals from my fingertips through my toes, through my heel, feeling the, the stretch, the opening up of the energetic pathways in my body. Back to center. So, I feel tight right in here in this muscle group. Everything else feels pretty loose. I feel pretty, pretty mobile, pretty loose, you know, pretty, you know, I can feel that I'm in a recovery day and mode. I'm a little bit um, slowed down. I'm about to eat a big meal, you know, refuel the body. Um, the fast twitch muscle fibers are not wanting to go super hard right now. I'm wanting to kind of let those catch up. So that's where these implements come in. So there's a few uh, things that I've learned about recovery that are really wonderful. Number one, rest. Got to rest adequately. Got to get enough sleep. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of, of tips and tricks to getting good sleep. Um, cutting out blue light uh, as close to when you choose to start winding down for the evening is a really important thing. The, uh, the mind reacts to blue light by activating the reticular activating system and, and getting the consciousness ramped up for the, for the morning, for waking up, for activity. Red light, uh, longer wavelength, where blue light is very um, high wavelength, very fast waves. Red light is closer to the infrared, to the warmth spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum. So red light is what you wanna have uh, during the evening. Let's the consciousness start to get into a more restful pattern. Good sleep, number one. Number two, um, uh, eating properly, right? You want to you want to fuel the body correctly. So, um, you know, and there's a lot to be said for that. Intermittent fasting is really a good way of going about allowing the body to repair itself correctly. Um, you know, getting the right macros. Just cutting out the sugar is probably the biggest step in the right direction. No alcohol um, is another good one. Uh, so, you know, paying attention to what you're putting in your, into your body. It's good sleep, good diet. Number three, I've found that um, exposure therapy, so hot therapy, cold therapy, um, hot bath, cold bath, cold shower, ice baths, um, cryogenic therapy, which is something that's that's popular now. I know with, with this COVID thing going on, uh, everybody's stuck inside and a lot of the businesses are closed, so there's not a lot of options to go and get cryotherapy done. But if you're all interested in um, cold therapy and recovery modalities, check out cryotherapy, C-R-Y-O, like cryogenic therapy, it's a good one. Um, and then, then hot therapy is really good as well. So sleep, good food, hot and cold for the muscles and the, and the joints. Um, and then number four is what I'm gonna to touch on right now, and that is myofascial release. Now myofascial release is, um, fascia is, the, is connective tissue. Myo, I believe, refers to the fact that, it, that you're doing it yourself. Um, could be wrong, but myofascial, so um, your own connective tissue, release so allowing it to uh release the tension and the and the old blood and, and the, the um all the constituents of that uh blood that's trapped in tightness in the body um eastern wisdom teaches us that where there is flow there is no um disease right that that you know the movement of the systems of the body is what creates health and healing and fitness and uh there's a lot of of uh, wisdom to be gained in that idea and that the understanding of that idea. So part of myofascial release in, in the philosophical is to make sure that everything's loose and flowing and, and working together, right? So um, like I say, my left lower back is tight. You know, it might be your neck, might be your upper back, might be, you know, a particular muscle group like your quadriceps or your, um, what is it? Your uh, gastrocnemius or your sartorius, your, your calf muscle. Um, you know, you can focus on whatever you want, but I'm gonna start out. This is a cool one. Uh, we can kind of go up in complexity. This is actually just two handballs. 
I believe it could be two tennis balls, but I think it's two handballs, like rubber handballs, wrapped in Coban. Coban is a um, medical bandage that you can get. Uh, Coban's the, the brand, but there's other brands, I'm sure. And you just wrap it with that, and Coban is this stuff that sticks to itself. Um, so after a lot of time using it, it's literally like turned into a solid just about, but you can find products like this on the internet all over the place, or like I say, you can make one. Two, two um, fitness balls uh, wrapped up uh, with tape or what have you, something that's gonna keep them together. Now, the utility of this is your spine fits right in between those. So this is a really wonderful tool to um, help your recovery, break down the, some of those, those knots and the, the muscle tightness. So I'll show you how you use this. You put it um, up on the top of your spine and then work your body up and it down towards your tailbone. And I'm telling you what, I've heard just about every tone of creak, crack, and pop from my body from using this. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll just, you know, get it somewhere that feels good and, and kind of work it for minutes and minutes. So it's great in the neck for that reason. If you have uh, bulging discs, if you have degenerative discs, if you have any kind of spinal stenosis or or malady of the spinal system, spinal cord, the, the vertebral bodies or the discs, this is a really great thing because it's literally keeping everything in line. It's going down the line and you can feel vertebrae by vertebra uh, where um, there's you know things that are out of line. So uh, you know going from the neck to uh, in between the scapula, in between the shoulder blades, I, I just work it down by pushing it to where I feel like, okay, that's kind of a high point and then I can just roll down from there. So now I've got it in between my shoulder blades. I can really feel it digging into the muscle groups there and it feels great. And so then I just start working my body, five points of contact, both my feet, my butt, and both my hands. And then of course the, the, uh, the you know, implement underneath my body. And I'm really working my breath. So I ideally want to be moving the uh, implement down my body as I'm exhaling. And I kind of just go, you know, as far as I can with a breath, reposition, take a breath in, and then go again. Keep going. Oh, there we go. That was a good crack. I wonder if you could hear that. So, there you go. That's uh, one really good tool that I use to release my back, to uh, target tightness and instability and um, imbalance in my um, spinal, spinal uh, erector muscles. And there are many, many, many little um, ligaments, tendons, and uh, musculature in the back. So this is a great thing. Uh, number two, uh, I've got a uh, larger foam roller. And this is uh, a really good tool. Um, I lost one of the, uh, the, oh no, I didn't. Ah, look at that. I thought I lost the end piece, but I had them both on one side. So it's got, you know, I mean, these are not expensive. You can get them wherever. If I was gonna get another one right now, I would get one that was wider. Um, you can get them as, as, as thick as you like as well. But this is, this is uh, good enough to meet my needs. And, um, you know, it's just strong enough that you can't really, this, you know, deform it. Um, it's got a plastic ring and then this kind of foam stuff that's, uh, you know, got enough different texture to it. See, some are really um, tight ridges and then some are more uh, diffuse ridges. This is a great thing. So you can use it to target any particular muscle group. So if you wanted to uh, get some, um, you know, kneading and rolling of the quadriceps muscles, for example, you can, again, you want to get as many points of contact as possible so you're not uh, sliding around, but I got both my arms, 
my left knee, my left ankle, and then, uh, you know, so there's four points of contact, and then, oh man, I can just roll right onto where there's a, a muscle, uh, you know, knot, and start kneading that. So this is a really good tool for finding the muscle groups that need attention and uh, rolling them out. Now it's painful, definitely hurts, but this is gonna allow you to, um, to recover much more effectively. So it's a real good targeted way. So where the other implement was good for the spine, this one I prefer for uh, muscle groups other than the spine. So that would be how you would target the quadriceps, Oh, I did a bike ride last night, so that actually feels really good. And then uh, another good one is the hamstrings. You could do one at a time, but uh, I'll show you how to do them both at the same time. Um, just kind of sitting up onto it and then rolling the hamstrings and my proximal hamstrings tendons. So the tendons that um, connect my hamstring muscle to my, my pelvis are, uh, are sore. Uh, like I said, I did a bike ride last night uh, with the full moon, and so this is a this is a nice way of, of addressing that that uh, muscle tightness, and I, I can feel the circulatory system and the endocrine system um, cycling that uh, blood and those those hormones and things. So this works for sure. This works. And then I can do my distal hamstrings tendon, where it connects to my femur and my knee, right? And then you can go to you know, your calf muscle, right? So just rolling the calf muscle. And then you can do both sides. And uh, you know, it's just as simple as that. So rolling is a really nice way of getting muscle groups. Another good one is you know, like the booty. So you can go kind of one side and really get the gluteus. And it hurts. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kid you. It, it, it's not, it doesn't, uh, you know, feel warm and fuzzy. It, you, you find the parts of your body that need to be uh, released, and, and there's a pain threshold that you have to be willing to endure. But when you roll through the bits of your body that are really tight, um, you can, you can feel it. You literally get an energy. Uh, flowing through your body that wasn't there before, where before there was a tightness. As you can go through that pain, there's a higher awareness and a, uh, and a kind of upping of the level of consciousness. But there's, there's, a, there's a pain threshold that you have to go through. So my gluteus is very sore from bicycling. So that is a good thing to focus on. Okay, so I'll roll that a little bit. And then from here, another great uh, one to do is right on the hip. So you get this position. Again, I always want to have four points of contact at least, so I'm, I'm, I have a good base, because you don't want to um, be putting this amount of pressure on something uh, in, in, in an unstable position, so I'm, I'm quite stable. But, oh, right on the connective tissue around the socket of my femur, right? What you, get, what you call it, the, the hip joint, um, my proximal femur, and uh, yeah, it feels really good. So there's that side, and I'm gonna do the other side. And I like putting my opposite leg over the top of the leg that I'm doing, and you can find right where it's sore. And you can work it out. So that's how you roll things out in the lower body. You can absolutely roll things out in the upper body. You know, when you want to do your shoulder. Whether you want to do, you want to, you know, oblique on your side. Um, I don't really ever do the chest roll, but you can do a chest roll, especially if you've done like a like a pec workout, like incline or decline bench. You gotta get that tension out of the body. Um, 
again, you can do the shoulder on the other side. Or the obliques. So, that's a little bit about the foam roller. Very good tool. Uh, you got, you know, massagers that you can get from uh, any convenience store. Uh, these are actually really cool. It's, it just takes a couple AA batteries or AAA batteries. So, you know, you can, um, you can keep this working for you for a long time. This is something you can just use while you're sitting around. Um, these are uh, other ways of rolling that are, um, you know, you, you do them directly. So this would be like a way of kneading out a muscle group. Um, and then you could do the glutes. Um, I prefer the roller, but this is another, another way of getting at that. You can be pretty targeted with, uh, with you know, some, some acupressure on, uh, on ligaments and tendons. So that's a nice tool. And then the most recent addition to my myofascial release arsenal is the Theragun. So this is a great product, the Theragun. Can you see that there? Um, this is the cheapest of the Theraguns. There's the Theragun G3 Pro, the Theragun G3, and the Theragun Live, L-I-V. We went for the cheap model because, you know, let's be cost effective. Um, it has, uh, I think, 160 millimeter amplitude um, and it's got a, a good amount of force. The one thing that kind of sucks about this is it's quite loud. So if I start using this, I don't think you'll be able to hear me very well, but we'll test it out. And uh, you just charge it. And this is an unbelievably good tool for the trade, for um, releasing the tension of the body. So uh, you just turn it on and then you can see. And then you just put it, you know, on the part of the body that's tight and get yourself a good, uh, a good massage. And um, if you need to see how well it works, look uh, at the muscle here. So there you have it, that, that's a little bit about recovery modalities. Oh man, when you find a spot that hurts and you're able to really effectively massage it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's worth it. So I highly recommend the Theragun G3 Live. Uh, we've only had it for about a week, but we use it all the time. Um, it has two different, uh, uh, tips. It's got kind of a, a little tip and a more broad tip. Um, and uh, it's really easy to use. You just put it on like so and you're ready to go. So thank you for watching my videos. This has been the recovery day. Uh, God love you. God bless you. More power to you in your fitness journey. Um, I'm going to keep posting uh, as much content as I can. I'm starting a Facebook group. Um, so I will keep you posted on that and hopefully we can come together as a community and talk fitness and talk health and talk wellness and talk, uh, well-being. And I would love to, uh, hear your thoughts, learn from you, 
learn about your particular situation, perspective, point of view, set of experiences, and see if we can't help each other. So thank you guys. Much love. Peace out. Talk to you later. Good morning, everybody. I am sore and tired, so that's a good sign. Means I've been getting after it. So, I'm just gonna do some light warm up, little stretching, maybe a little bit of a uh, strength exercise, and uh, call it good. So, these morning workouts are an opportunity for anybody at home uh, to get their body uh, working and improving uh, with no exercise machines, no money spent, uh, just a little bit of time, you know, just, just honoring the body. So that's what we're going to do. Good opposite arm, opposite leg. Just start feeling that flow through the movement. And maybe get some, some lateral movement. Try some uh, some push front kicks. Keep a good tall, strong back. We could do some, um, how about some, we could do some, one, twos, so getting a good, good base, and then one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, move, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, 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 one, two, three, two, three, one, 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 two. What I do a lot when I'm shadow boxing incorrectly is I stand up too tall and then I'm kind of pushing myself off balance. And from watching JH Life uh, Fit, uh, this gentleman who's a trainer in Kuwait right now is an Aussie, uh, I see good form is getting that back leg back and being able to really throw that punch out forward. So 
I've been following him. Shout out to JH Life Fit for uh, showing us good form. So, you know, I, I come to um, martial arts for the fitness and the joy of movement and flow and the ability to be confident in one's body and not defensive or, you know, weird socially, but rooted, grounded, powerful, calm, peaceful, relaxed. And, uh, you know, feeling like you can, uh, my extra mats are coming soon, so that's gonna be a good thing. But feeling like you can uh, defend yourself is a good way of, you know, feeling more confident, more uh, at peace, you know? So um, it's a good thing to do. Uh, I don't know if my groin is still really not feeling it. Let's see if I can do it. Yeah, side kick is not there yet, but I can do a side kick this way. So remember, we, we practice the side kick. So you're in your, you're in your stance, and then you faint, right? Get that back leg back, and then boom. good that gets my obliques I'm really working on my obliques because oblique fitness like getting getting this musculature developed releases the, the tightness of my lower back so that's a real focus of my hamstring flexibility oblique strength so doing lots of exercises like this right bring the body you know in concert uh, with those muscle groups. a little bit let's do some um, a little bit more uh, uh, shadow boxing and then I'm gonna do some forward bends and call it good Do a little bit of that, that forward bend technique that I've taught you guys.
There we go. That's a nice, easy morning workout for you guys. I'll bow to you for the honor of exercising together, sharing space, sharing time, sharing experience, and enjoying our bodies, enjoying the flow, enjoying movement. Thank you guys for watching. Namaste, appreciate you. Much love. See you next time.